Hey guys, back again. So let's talk about In Surge of Darkness 2. Um, and I saw the first one whenever it was put on Shudder, and now I watched the second one because it was just released on Shudder. I knew it was an Indiegogo project that uh, got a lot of people, and I would have contributed, I just completely forgot about it. But I'm glad regardless that I found some way to support it and watch it because I did want to see In Search of Darkness 2 because the first In Search of Darkness was really, really cool. And it gave me a big list of stuff that I wanted to see. Uh, there were a lot of horror movies that I was like, wow, cool. I really, I, I love watching horror and I, keep, I love finding more horror to watch. And that one specifically, I remembered, um, there was one in particular, Q the Winged Serpent. I remember that they talked about it in that one. Um, and they talked about a lot of the big, big ones that everybody knows, but there were a lot that I, they talked about that I watched a lot of from that first In Search of Darkness. Um, so now on part two, it's so weird because they, I feel like they did just as fantastic a job as they did with the other one. They got a lot of great interviews with a lot of big people like the last one, like you would expect, um, but they did a thing, I don't remember if they did this in the first one, but they did a thing where, like, they talked about movies, but they also talked about certain subjects or people um, for a little while. Um, like, for example, they talked about Italian horror or giallos, which is a really cool one because I love giallos as well from what I've seen. Um, I haven't seen every giallo in the world, definitely not. I just started watching them two or three years ago, but I really loved that segment that did a good job, especially there were a lot that I've known that I've seen, um... I like that they talked about the big ones, um, and they and in the in there they talked about first Dario Argento, Lumberto Bava, um, and Mario Bava, and I was surprised that Fulci wasn't one of the big three. Whenever they mentioned the big three, because those big three are the ones they mentioned, um, Lumberto Bava, I haven't seen a whole lot of that of Lumberto Bava stuff. I've seen I think Demons one and two are Lumberto Bava, but. Uh, I've seen a good amount of Argento, um, and in Mario Bava, I think I've seen, like, two or three, um, like Bay of Blood, Blood and Black Lace, um, those typically, those ones, but I haven't seen as much of Mario Bava, so, again, they give a lot on that one, they don't really talk about those movies in full, they just kind of give examples, as opposed to showing throughout this thing, showing specific movies from the 80s, they just kind of talk about a set of them in that Giallo one, which I liked. Um, I liked the Nancy Allen interview as well, because I love Nancy Allen. She's awesome, and I really like seeing just more on her and more on her film career. She's just one of my favorite actresses from this era of 80s horror. Um, and I just rewatched Carrie, because um, I love that movie. I've seen that millions of times, that I got the Screen Factory over there. Um, but I rewatched that and just, I love her performance in that movie every time. And she's just so fantastic. And like, and she's in great in a lot of other stuff um, as well. But I really love her and Carrie. Um, and also they did a children and horror thing. We're talking about specifically horror with children. I thought that was pretty cool. Um, you had a Tom Savini interview. Um, and he mentioned a movie that he did. Um, and I wrote it down. Because I was like, I can't pronounce, I can't remember this name if I don't write it down. But he did a movie in Asia, Japan, something like that, where it was like Zhao Shang Pao Pao, and it was like a horror movie. So I really want to look that up, and maybe I could find that somewhere. Um, but Tom Savini, that was a good interview, and I recently watched that Tom and Tom Savini Smoke and Mirrors documentary as well, um, which I'll review sometime in the future. But I uh, I like seeing that with Tom Savini as well. Um, you also got comedy and 80s horror they talked about. They talked about Lady A. Quigley, which is always great. Um, and her horror workout, which I have not seen, but I, I want to see that now, definitely. Um, and there's a director that they talked about that I haven't seen any of her movies, but there's this uh, director named Jackie Kong, who I guess directed Blood Diner um, and The Being, and those movies were mentioned in here. And I thought, just watching this person, like she was so funny in the in the interviews, that I want to see those. And I hear Blood Diner is awesome, and I hear that being from what I saw on this was looks really cool. Um, but Blood Diner is one I've heard of for a while. I just haven't got the chance to see it. But Jackie Kong, she seems like a really funny person, and I like seeing the interviews for this person. This lady was really funny. Um, and I want to see those movies. I haven't seen any of them, and it's kind of a shame because I really like that interview with her. Um, and then they also talked about anti-heroes and they talked, they had a Robert England interview, which was cool. And he talked about Phantom of the Opera <laughs> that he was in. Um, 
Now, they talked about a lot of movies in this. Like, I wrote down the whole list right here, but they they really did so many of them. Like, there's a lot that I've seen, but there's a lot that I did not have not seen in this list. Um, they did a great job, especially for me specifically, because I've seen a lot of the big ones, but there's a couple, or not a couple, there's a lot of the ones that are more obscure that I will mention here that I have not seen. Um that I want to see like for example I want to see house two through four and they show that um I've seen the first house I thought it was pretty entertaining from what I remember but I haven't seen any of the sequ sequels God, I'm trying to burp I guess um but they also talked about like humanoids from the deep Roger Corman Senate cool alligator altered states um the boogans the beast within evil speak evil speak looks fun it's got Clint Howard in it um, Alone in the Dark, which I have seen in Alone in the Dark. I think it was the new one, like from late 2000s, and I didn't like it. But I think this is another, this is another one from the 80s. But, oh no, no, I've seen, is it, is it called Alone in the Dark, the one with the clown face? I think that might be, or something similar in name to it, because I think that's like Boba the Clown or something. But there's another Alone in the Dark, um... I'm getting all mixed up with like the Alone in the Dark movies. I guess there's like two or three now, now that I think about it in like on this video. Um, they did a lot more that I really wanted to see, like the the keep and uh Ghoulies. I want to see Ghoulies. I've only seen Ghoulies three. Um, I know there's four of them, and I haven't found a way to really find to watch the other Ghoulies movies. Ghoulies three I only had because I had that horror box set um from Lionsgate where it was like eight movies and a lot of them are sequels like 976 Evil 2 and like Class 1999 and stuff like that. But they had Ghoulies 3 on there, and I watched it that way. That's the only, re that's the only reason I saw the third one in the first place first before the other ones, because I can't really find Ghoulies 1 and 2 anywhere, or 4. So I do want to see Ghoulies. Um, I also, I'm not going to say all these, but there are other ones, like like they mentioned Dead Ringers, which is Cronenberg. Want to see that um, Hollywood Chainsaw Hookers, which just the title alone, I've got to see it. Looks so funny. Um, and Dagon, I want to see Dagon. And pretty much that's I got a couple more I can mention, but that's pretty much a lot of the ones that I want to see. Um, but overall, this one, this documentary had so many others that I've seen already. Like I'm not gonna mention them all, but they went kind of obscure. Um, because there are some that people haven't seen, I know, but I've seen these ones, like, for example, um, Saturday the 14th, or Dead and Buried, or, um, or Demons, like, and they did a lot of sequels, like Creepshow 2, Prom Night 2, Friday 2, um, I think Friday 2, or, uh, not Friday 2, Nightmare 2, um, and then they mentioned, like, Graduation Day, which is cool, um, Cannibal Holocaust, Silent Night, Deadly Night, Hills Have Eyes too. Like, they did a good job with making this a really diverse set of horror movies. It wasn't just like, oh, here's the big ones that everybody knows about. Here's a lot of ones that you haven't seen, or maybe have, but I'm glad that I found a lot to like in this documentary. There were a lot of movies that I haven't seen that I really want to see now, especially with the fact that they just did a great job with all the interviewers and bringing in all these, all the, all this talent to, to show off. It just was really entertaining. So, really, overall, I really enjoyed In Search of Darkness 2. This was a great watch, and I really, really highly recommend it if you have not seen it yet. It just dropped on Shudder, like I said, and people probably did a lot of the Indiegogo campaign for it, but I didn't, unfortunately, but it was at least on Shudder, so I got to see it some way or another in support in one way or another. But, uh, but yeah, really, really loved In Search of Darkness 2. This is a really worthwhile documentary, especially if you liked the first one. The first one did a great job as well of being very, very fun and entertaining and giving you a great list, or at least me anyways, a great list of new horror to watch. So I'm going to be, be putting all these on my Letterboxd watch list. Um, so it's going to be a lot more homework for me, but I just, I love watching horror movies, so I just keep finding more and more. So that's it for today, and I'll talk to you guys later. Take care.